I'd say the timing of this video is pretty good. Ten Hag is having a nightmare. So I'm going to take over Manchester United and get them to glory with three key challenges. We need to try and win a European trophy, a domestic cup and get back into the top four of the Premier League. Now they've got a decent squad so that sounds pretty easy but there's one big twist. We must use four players in the wing back and full back positions. Seemed like a good idea at the time. So straight into season one and like I said we're in a decent spot because they've got a decent squad now and also they've developed a huge staff infrastructure with a huge coaching team, a huge scouting team and of course a brand new board and team. There's obviously already been a ton of transfer business both in and out so we don't need to do too much in season one. Which I guess you can say is a good job because Ten Hag and his boys have already blew it all. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is get some sort of tactic working. Now, the one I've got there is one I used in a past video, and it worked all right with City. It worked all right. It had some frailties, but as a start point, I think we'll go with this. Now, obviously, it looks kind of ridiculous, but all the tactics throughout this save are going to be, but let me tell you what this is. Basically, if you see the video on this tactic, it starts out as a 4 2 3 one press, and I simply move these fellas back into those positions. Absolute rubbish. Now you might have noticed that Kobe Mainu was uh, wide in one of those wide positions. Now because we're going to be using inverted wing backs, I think, we need some good ball players who can play there and then come inside. So he's a good ball player, we're going to retrain him to be a natural in that position to give us more options. Now this is an unfamiliar formation, we might have to go through a bit of pain here, especially when we think that we are retraining someone like Mainu to play out wide when he's not a natural. So it might be a bit of a tough start. Now the first big test was a community shield against Man City and I was a bit worried I won't lie to you. But to my surprise we did draw level and it was one of the four wing backs that got us there in Luke Shaw. We did succumb to City eventually but I'm pretty happy with only losing 2-1 to the best team in England. Our first Premier League game I got pretty excited we went away to Leicester and absolutely smashed them 4-0. I mean it wasn't even close. We followed that with a bit of a missed opportunity at home to Fulham, but then in our next home game against Brentford, we really capitalised. If everyone's fit, we line up like that. We've got a competition up front with Rashford, Xerxes and Hoyland. So midway through the season, we started really well, but then it looks like teams worked us out and we started to struggle a bit. But we've got it back going on now. As expected, it took Menu quite a while to adapt to his new role, but he is now a natural, so hopefully his performances will increase. But our first goal of getting in the top four looks unlikely in season one as we're down in seven, but I'm a little bit worried about my job. And we got knocked out of the Carabao Cup early, but in better news, we did top the Europa League group easily and we're still in the FA Cup. The average positions of this formation do show the battle we're up against. With the ball, it looks something like that, with two players out wide glued together. Now in my experience though, it doesn't necessarily look like that with the further advanced wing back spending more time in the middle when we're attacking. Without the ball, we drop back into this formation, so we're not going to get beaten out wide, that's for sure. For an overall position of that. Oh, by the way, we got rid of Casemiro. You're welcome, United fans. He's gone to PSG. Second half of the season was far more consistent. Really consistent, especially in the Cups, including this absolute devastation of Girona. Over two legs, the tie finished 12-2. And in the semi-final, we did the business away at Frankfurt with one of the four wing-backs scoring two with Diego Dallo. Boom. And we slightly tweaked the formation as well, making it a little bit more attacking. Our cup form continued, we made it to the semi-finals and one of our wing-backs did it again. That was Luke Shaw in the 121st minute and we absolutely robbed it from Tottenham, I won't lie to you. That meant we had a chance to complete one of our targets with a cup win. We got a penalty early doors against Liverpool and it was Bruno who stepped up. Son of a... Liverpool then absolutely battered us and scored three. And we lost the FA Cup final. Overall though, that formation with a cautious mentality was far more successful. And that sends me to the Europa League final. And shockingly, it was Tottenham in the final with us. So the title was coming back to English football one way or another and it was Garnacho who scored the goal for us. Gave us our first trophy and our first tick of our target. And to be fair, yet again Tottenham. We robbed them again, but we used that new formation and we've got one of our targets done. And it's probably a good job we won that because we finished down in sixth behind basically the big five and Villa are in there as well. Above Chelsea, but we lost 11 times. We scored 74 but conceded 50. But we did get that trophy and that sends us in the Champions League, which means the board are somewhat happy. So we finished the season with that tactic. We will keep that in our back pocket, but I just want to try something else and I'm going to try this. Are you ready? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. 
Part of me just wants to try this free up front scenario. I'm going to let the wing backs get further forward, acting like midfielders. And then the lad in the middle, you got it. You've got a job on, son. Now, we've got a massive squad, but in true Manchester United fashion, we're going to have a big turnaround in the summer transfer window, I do believe. Lots of work to do. Let's get to it. Atrocious, awful, disgusting. So going into season two, we'd knocked one of our targets off and now it was time for a brand new tactic and some brand new players. It had certainly been a hectic time in transfer window. We knew about Casemiro leaving, he's gone permanently to PSG for 25 million. And obviously that Sancho move that they set up, cheers lads. We also sold Malisha to Leipzig for 17 million. And we released loads of players getting them off the wage bill like Johnny Evans, Ericsson, and of course, Sir Harry Maguire. What that did was make our wage budget ginormous at nearly £1 million a week available. But there was another big move and it's quite apt after the weekend's shenanigans who left us. That's right, I took a risk and cashed in on Bruno Fernandes for a couple of reasons. First of all, he's 30. The second of all, it was 120 million rising to 140 million. And third of all, if I go for free up front, I don't think he's best suited. So Bruno's off. But don't worry, United fans, I replaced him with Victor Gayorquez for 40 million. Carlos Augusto came in as a backup wing back for 10 million. How about a free transfer of Jonathan Tarr for centre back? I brought back Angel Gomez as well. I'm going to retrain him, make sure he can play in DM. And an interesting signing is Serge Gnabry for 35 million. Used to playing up front, out wide, he's going to play a wing back for me. That meant for season two we look a bit like this. We've got options now. We've got Kobe Maino who can play there as well. In the games, we're going to go a bit more attacking. I'm going to play Gnabry in there. Up front, we can play all three of Rashford, Xerxes, and Hoyland. But Gayorquez is going to come in as well, probably for Hoyland or Rashford. I want to keep Xerxes in because he's a great drop-off striker and he's got a flair of 19 and his passing and vision are superb. So we took a risk with players and tactic, but early signs were good in pre-season. This is against Bayern Munich. FC Bayern came to Old Trafford and they just couldn't deal with what we offered. Maybe they'd just never seen a formation like this and they couldn't deal with three strikers up front. But yeah, 6-0. Signs are good and as you can see, the players enjoyed it. The good form continued into our first game of the season, away at Ipswich at Portman Road. The average positions for this one are a lot different. If I look at it with the ball, you can see number 8 and number 3 are our inverted wingbacks and they're a lot more central, leaving 20 and 23, the wingbacks, to naturally play out wide. Without the ball, we drop into a decent shape. That's a lot better than the other shape. Overall, we look a bit like that. So the start was good and then it started to go a little bit wrong. And we're currently in a terrible, terrible run. We're sitting down in 7th for the top 4 looks out of the equation this time and Newcastle have already knocked us out of the League Cup. That means our only hope for a domestic trophy is the FA Cup but it's very early days in that one. Onana got injured in January so I brought in Justin Bijlow from Feyenoord for 20 million and the second half of the season was better but up and down as hell. We murdered Celtic in the Champions League but taking this formation and tactic to the new Camp and Barca in the next round kind of exposed us. Now look, I won't lie, the league campaign was a bit of a disappointment and we managed to lose somehow at home to Sunderland 5-1. What? And all football logic went out of the window as two games later we went away to Man City and beat them. That meant an incredibly disappointing performance by finishing 7th in the league and the board weren't too happy. Until, however, we went away to Liverpool in the FA Cup quarter-final and put four past them. I mean, we've absolutely robbed them there, let's be real. To be honest, we'd had a nice run. In the fourth round, we'd beaten Fulham. In the fifth round, we'd beaten Leeds. The quarters was that Liverpool game. And in the semi-final, we drew Norwich and beat them as well. That meant we were going to play Hull in the final, Hull City. So we had a massive chance to tick off the second challenge in our target of winning a domestic cup. And we got there thanks to Giorquez. We won 4-2 and we take down the FA Cup. I'm telling you, that FA Cup win has probably saved my ass there because 7th place is pretty rubbish. We didn't do anything in Europe, but we got the trophy. So now we've got the FA Cup, we've won our European trophy. But I'm telling you, that top four seems a long way away. That's 21 points out. That's the formation we used throughout this season. You can see that it's going to have its problems, so we need to tweak it a bit. I do like playing three up front though. The problem is, when you've got to play four wing backs, where do you find the other players from? Do you go one centre back? to bring another into midfield. Can't go on this, can it? It cannot go on. It can go on. So it was time for season three, and with my job on the line pretty much every season, there was one goal, to get Manchester United back into that top four. So last season's tactic was decent, so I've tweaked it just a little bit. And saying goodbye was the butcher, Lissandro Martinez, he's gone for 30 million, and Anthony's finally gone as well for 32 Villarreal. But I splashed the cash on Michael Coyote, 
an absolutely lightning wing back, 50 million. I stole Calafiori from Arsenal for 5 million as backup. Kimpembe came in as centre back for free. Another free transfer was SMS. And another £50 million piled on Mosquera from Valencia. What a centre-back he's going to be. So the big changes I've made to the tactic are the two wider strikers will now be the drop-off strikers. So I'm hoping they will back up in here a bit and maybe track those full-backs a little bit as well. In fact, we'll add in that. So each player, so Hoyland is on the right-hand side, so we'll get him just keeping an eye on the left side as well. Same with Xerxes on this side. We'll keep him keeping an eye on that right back so that might make us a little bit more solid because we're really good going forward now early signs were good because we took city to penalties so yeah that's promising unfortunately we lost our first game of the season in the 99th minute to aston villa of course of course but we responded really well other than an absolutely random free six at tottenham the rest of the start of the season was pretty good so i was resting plays in the europa league because we've already done that we've won that so i'm just prepared to sacrifice that one good job as well eek we also crashed out of the Carabao Cup at the quarterfinal stage to Arsenal. I'm playing a risky game here. But it seems to be paying off because in the league we're doing pretty well. Pretty well. That was a big thumping of Newcastle and we even managed to beat Aston Villa in the return game. So after a bit of an up and down time, especially in that midpoint, we've started to get it back now. And in January, we are sat in fourth, right in the mix, right in the mix. Tottenham are storming the league, by the way. The tactic seems to be holding up pretty well. So we're prioritising the league, which is a good job, because in the second half of the season, Newcastle dumped us out of the FA Cup, and Benfica destroyed us in the Europa League. But the four wing-backs and the two drop-off strikers were combining really nicely together. And with four games to go, we are in the shake-up to get this top four place. We had a massive game up next against Arsenal. Arsenal came at us and had 17 shots, but only two of them were on target. We were far more clinical and we got a massive, massive win. That 3-0 win put us above Arsenal and after beating Everton and Southampton, we managed to do it and we finished in the Champions League spots at last in the top four. But Crystal Palace, who finished 14th by the way, somehow got to the Europa League final and beat Atalanta. And that meant they got the Champions League spot, and not us. Oh, for fuck's sake. I mean, we got top four, we won a European trophy and a domestic trophy, so I did the little challenge I set myself. But Palace just feels like they haven't completely done it because they've stole the Champions League spot. But that tweak to the tactic finally got us there into the top four. It's not perfect by any means, but with four wing backs, it's about the best we could do, I think. As you can see, we don't draw many matches. It's either win or bust. As always, give it a go if you can do better than me which you probably can, let me know. And by the way, Eric Ten Hag is chilling at Wolves. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs>